everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to be doing some Kyoker Cutter metallic jewelry. And this time I will be using my basic cutter set and adding in some of that wonderful metallic color shift paint that I love so much. Anyways, I've got some scrap gray clay here, and I'm just going to kind of brush this up, make it kind of a nice release agent on top. And then I'm bringing in some stamps that I got, and I will go ahead and put the link to find these particular stamps in the description area on this video. Once I have this thing completely stamped up though, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring in my Aqua Flash from my Color Shift paints. I, you know, I love that stuff. <laughs> I can't seem to get away from it. <laughs> and we're just gonna go ahead and with my finger, I'll roughly go ahead and lay down a little bit of that particular paint right over all the little raised edges here on this particular sheet. Once I have this piece of clay, and actually this clay was scrap clay, it was like scrap gray, all right, that I had covered just that raised edge with that aqua color shift paint. I brought my Kyoker cutters back in, my basic shapes, and I was looking through and I really liked the pointed like teardrop here and I wanted to use it. So I took and I made about, I wanna say I cut out about three or four of this particular shape, and then I went back into that same cutter set and I used that smaller little cutter to go ahead and cut out the little areas and actually the same cutter to cut it into sections. And that's what I'm showing right here. Along with bringing in some scrap fresh clay that I have not baked and using that paint once more to cover the top parts of this clay. Once I have that covered though, I'm gonna bring in those smaller cutters and I had the green there, I showed you the different ones. I'll use that smaller cutter just like I had done with the aqua there and I'm separating out each of those pieces because they've been baked. I will take that same form and I'm going to cut that out with my purple here. Now the nice thing about these particular, well just these cutters in general, right, is that when you have a solid form like this and you have smaller ones that can go inside the larger cutters and cut out separate sections into say a larger piece, you can then take that same smaller cutter, create more of those forms in different colors, and then you can add those into the design where it would match up with what you've already done. In starting this first set of jewelry, you're really gonna see what I meant by what I had just said. When I go to cut down this form, and these, these particular forms, this is fresh clay. It has not been baked, it's just plain black. I'm using that original cutter one more time, and then I'm gonna bring in those pieces that I had baked, where I had done the stamping on them, and I'm gonna place those into the design. They fit in perfectly. It's just a piece. You know, I had, I had cut it using that same larger cutter where I was like, okay, now we'll just put this right on top and it creates a three-dimensional look, but it also just right there makes it look really beautiful. So now that I have those particular pieces, and of course my turquoise piece was already baked, so I have to bring in my liquid Sculpey or my liquid clay to go ahead and adhere the two clay pieces together. You guys are so proud of me. <laughs> yes, she brought in her liquid clay. <laughs> and this way then it'll bond really well together. Like my rule of thumb, just for an FYI and for those who might have forgotten, I like to use that liquid clay, clay to clay, that you know, to help get a really nice bond. But if you're bringing in something that's other than clay, whether it's metal, glass, or whatever, I usually go more to my epoxy glues. Now that I have those bottom, you know, almost turquoise like uh, boomerang pieces put in place, I'm gonna go in and I take those smaller pieces that I've cut out and I'm gonna put them on the opposite side of, or I should say the opposite end of these black pointed teardrops. Now, once I have that in place, um, you know, from here, you really can just kind of design, all right? You could, 
I, I was really tempted not to use my cutters, but I thought, no, let's go ahead and stick right to the cutters because part of me wants to just go floral. <laughs> I want to go ahead and start making little tiny flowers and putting them. And that's another option here. I mean, this becomes a little bit of a playground. You just kind of experiment and figure out what works, right? But if I'm sticking purely just to these cutters, which gives a lot of option anyway, and if you're not terribly great at doing three-dimensional pieces like, oh, flowers or any kind of form yet, this might be a nice way to get into polymer clay as a beginner even and just put it in. So like on this, for instance, this green clay here, I brought in my Kemper cutters. So I know you guys are going to say, wait a minute, she broke her own rule here. I'm supposed to only use Kyoker. Yeah, okay. Well, I had to bring in some of my teardrop cutters from Kemper and I'm using the tiniest ones. And the reason for this is guys, these things are tiny enough. They work really well in concert with the Kyoker ones. And you can tell that just by looking at how I was able to cut down into the purple piece here and I'm placing this into the overall design. These things work really well together. Plus, the reason why I really had to go with the Kempers here is because this is the tiniest teardrop, I want to say cutter, that I had or I have. I do have the Kyoker small cutters, but they didn't have a teardrop form. And maybe there's another set out there, but I also tried another set that I had that was not Kyoker. And it was also, they were small cutters, but they didn't have a handle on them. And even when I went and compared them, guess what? <laughs> That Kemper cutter was still smaller. So if you really want something that's going to work inside of it, and as you could tell, just by doing that little cutout, even within the tinier teardrop forms, this really makes a nice little lace-like leaf when you put it into the design. But from here, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys just watch my hands talk as I design up this first set of jewelry.
Okay, so I'm bringing in my black clay here, and this has been rolled out on a number four setting on my Atlas Pasta machine. You could even do a number three. I, you know, it just really depends upon how much of a backing you want. I usually like to tend towards the three or the four. It just depends upon my mood of the day. And I'm bringing in some of my silver eye pins and that same cutter. We're gonna cut exactly the same form one more time because really I've not veered off of this form. The only time I don't do that is when the form has been completely, completely different. And that happens sometimes. And when you do that, I can't use the cutter. I have to use some, I have to use my needle tool to trace around the actual piece itself. But in this case, you know, the most of the form is still there. So I can go strictly with the cutter and I don't have to go ahead and as they say, reinvent the wheel. <laughs> so I'm bringing in my eye pins. I'm just going to press down lightly on those. I'll bring in that liquid Sculpey, place my decorative baked pieces on top of those unbaked clay cut forms once more. And then this will go into my oven at 275 degrees to 300, depending upon what kind of clay you're using. A lot of this is mainly scrap clay, so most of the time it's 275. Unless you've got scrap Kato around, I'd stick to 275 degrees for about seven to 10 minutes. The second set of jewelry that we're going to be creating with that basic Kyoker cutter set is actually one of the more decorative forms in it. And I, I, I love this particular teardrop. I know you guys have probably heard me say this before. <laughs> and I've cut out the center part of that so that we could go ahead and do something fun there. But as you can tell here, the top part of these, and I did not show it here, but the top part of that is done with that copper glitter clay. And I used that smaller, more decorative cutter to create those forms. And I just placed it right over the top of it. The, of course, the turquoise pieces have been baked already. So they're already hard. We don't have to worry about that. And I'm going in here with my green flash um, metallic paint. And I covered over on that scrap clay where I wanted it. I took those green flash pieces and inserted them into the openings of where that turquoise where the turquoise pieces are. And that's the nice thing about these cutters, right? You can use those smaller cut pieces and place them back into the original design. And that's what I did. I did that, plus I used my Kemper cutters once more with that green flash. Decided, you know, I need a few more of those teardrops and place that over that glitter copper that I had at the very top it added just a little bit more flash and that was something I needed right at the top. I just, I needed that. Plus, I decided to go ahead and go with the pointed end of that teardrop, which made it where it would just kind of roll over onto the sides and give it a nice, really finished kind of look. At this point then, I brought in my plum flash and I decided to go ahead and use that also in this design, but really, the best way is to go ahead and let you all watch my hands talk as I finish up the second set of jewelry. The year is 1991. Birds and people are living together in seemingly perfect harmony until one day a young man catches fire. This is Phoenix.
On this third set of Kyoker type cutter jewelry, I decided to use my pastel purple as a metallic. I hadn't really used this particular color in the other two pieces and I thought I really wanted to bring in something a little lighter and see what that would look like. I really, I used the middle section of that turquoise that was stamped from earlier and then I also brought back in my tinier teardrops and I decided to cut a few more pieces out of those smaller green flash teardrop forms. Now, once I have those particular forms kind of cut out and I'm lifting a few of these up off of my tile, I'm gonna come in with my super glue and I'm gonna place a little bit of that super glue on the back of one of these um, turquoise pieces. And I'm gonna place that down onto that purple clay. The reason is, is because, and I'm not using the liquid Sculpey, is because it's not a true clay to clay bond. I've got acrylic paint in there, and since I've got acrylic paint in there, eh, I'm going to go ahead and go with my super glue instead. Now, if you want to go ahead and do the liquid clay, uh, liquid clay, go ahead and try it, but I really like to go, if it's not a pure clay to clay bond, then I don't really like to rely on that. I like to go to my super glue instead. But from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys once more watch my hands talk as I put this third set together.
right, so this is the end result of creating my Kyoker metallic jewelry in polymer clay. Please use this for study and reference. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.